Who gets credit for a discovery? Have you ever thought history seems to be remembering the wrong people? History is written by the victors, or people from my group have been written out of history? The most famous example is probably Christopher Columbus being credited with the discovery of the Americas. At this point, everybody knows he wasn't the first person to set foot on these continents. He wasn't even the first European, as Leif Erikson and the Vikings had landed and settled in Canada centuries earlier. Of course, there were already people there, so really the discovery should go to the people who crossed over the Bering Land Bridge thousands of years ago. And how did the Americas end up being named after Amerigo Vespucci? Well, apparently he was credited as being the first to realize Columbus had not landed in the East Indies, but on a whole new continent altogether. And so a cartographer named Martin Waldensmuller decided to name South America after him on his maps, and it stuck. Now, there's an alternate theory that America was actually named after the Amorisk Mountains in Nicaragua, but I'm not sure how those in favor of this theory explain the writings supposedly written by Waldensmuller's partner stating he had named the land after Vespucci. And what about our number system, which we call Arabic numerals, because the Europeans got them through Muslim Spain? And while the actual symbols that made their way into Europe are Western Arabic symbols, the numerical system originated in classical India. And so really they should be called Hindu numerals. Incidentally, that is what they're called in the Middle East. Or maybe you've heard that the geocentric model of the solar system came from Ptolemy, and the heliocentric model from Copernicus, despite it being well known, neither of these men were actually the first to come up with these models. In fact, you can pretty much be sure that any civilization that practiced astronomy would have debated these two points of view. Well, it turns out that this sort of misnaming of discoveries is actually a sociological law, and these misnomers are examples of what's called Stigler's Law of Eponymy, named after statistician Stephen Stigler, which states that no scientific discovery is named after its original discoverer. Now, the law is stated in relation to scientific discoveries, but it's actually true for all types of discoveries, like the discovery of America. So if the original discoverer doesn't get the official credit, who are discoveries named after? Generally, that honor goes to one of two people. Either the discovery is named after a person who popularized it, like Christopher Columbus or Copernicus, or it's named after a person who put the final piece of the puzzle in a long list of small and incremental discoveries. Arabic numerals kind of fits both rules. Now realize Stigler's law is not a hard rule. Sometimes a correct person actually does get the credit, but those are the exceptions. Also, the more time has passed since the discovery has been made, the more likely Stigler's law will hold. Seeing as most discoveries obey this law, I obviously can't go over all of them, but if you want, Wikipedia has a page with a list of examples of Stigler's law, which I've linked in the description. Now, mind you, it is an incomplete list. I will, however, go over a handful of famous examples. First up, and fittingly, Stigler's Law itself is an example of Stigler's Law, as he himself attributed it to Robert K. Merton. But the law actually had been previously stated in some form by others as well, including Mark Twain, Carl Boyer, and Alfred North Whitehead. Another famous example is the Pythagorean Theorem, which was not first discovered by Pythagoras. In fact, the theorem had been known by the Babylonians, the Egyptians, the Classical Indians, and the Chinese. Another example is Newton's first law. Numerous people before him had already stated something similar, such as Galileo, Descartes, and Johannes Kepler. But the first known statement that is actually equivalent to Newton's first law came from John Wallace prior to Newton writing his Principia. Next up, Gaussian distributions, named after the mathematician Gauss, but were actually introduced, as far as we know, by Abraham de Moivre. We also have Euler's number E and Euler's formula, both named after mathematician Leonard Euler, even though they were in fact not discovered by him, but by mathematicians Jacob Bernoulli and Roger Coase, respectively. The famous Fibonacci sequence was known long before Fibonacci came around, and the earliest known description of this sequence dates all the way back to classical India. Another example is Pascal's triangle, 
not discovered by Blaise Pascal, but in fact was known to, well, just about everybody, but again, the earliest known description comes from classical India. Next we have Snell's Law of Refraction. Definitely not discovered by Willebrod Snellius, as it was already known to many before him. The law was actually discovered 600 years before by a Persian man named Ibn Sahu. And finally, my personal favorite example of Stigler's law, Maxwell's equations, as this set of equations contains numerous layers of examples of Stigler's law. The set of equations are named after James Clerk Maxwell, who did not discover them. The first two equations are called Gauss's law, again named after Gauss. But he was not the first to discover them. In fact, they were discovered by Joseph-Louis Lagrange and Pierre Pellerin de Maricourt, respectively. The next equation is called Faraday's Law, and this one was in fact discovered by Michael Faraday, and so it is correctly named and is not an example of Stigler's Law. And lastly, this fourth equation is a bit complicated. Technically, it was discovered by Maxwell, but a special case of the first part of this equation, circled in pink, had already been discovered by André-Marie Ampère, or Ampere in English. But he did not actually discover the general form of this law, even though he got his name on it. And so instead of getting credit for the full equation, Maxwell got his name attached to the second part of the equation, circled in blue, which is known as Maxwell's addition. The whole set of equations ended up being named after Maxwell, as his final contribution formed a complete description of electromagnetism and light. And so this is an example of the name going to the person who found the last piece of the puzzle. There are many more examples of Stigler's Law, of course, and if you have any favorite ones, please post them in the comments. And remember, if you're thinking that some discoverer from your particular clan or group didn't get proper credit, that this is an example of an injustice or a rewriting of history, I won't name any names here, this is simply what happens to everybody, so don't take it personally as it's just a natural part of the randomness of what gets passed down in history. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.